Hi, so in one of the recent videos where I discussed things about my life for over 25 minutes, I mentioned that during October of 2022 we went to Africa to shoot one of the coolest projects so far, Africa Eco Race, aka the Real Dakar Rally. In this little video I will talk about our experience, challenges and workflow during this project and I will also tell you about some new changes that we made to our Sonys. Let's go! So yeah, Africa Eco Race is the real deal. 70 bikes, 30 cars, trucks and SUVs attempting to cross more than 6000 kilometers through the Sahara Desert and arrive in the car. And our job as always was to film all of that in the most cinematic way possible and create content for the next year, which is quite tough. Actually, the reason we got hired to do this project is because they wanted to modernize their social media, including Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, and YouTube. Because looking back at their previous videos, it just kind of felt like they're stuck with the filming and editing style, which has long been forgotten already. Everything about it just seemed dated. But yeah, we got hired to come here and make a difference. So it's me and Katrina this time. I'm filming content for YouTube and she's shooting with her phone and creating reels and stories for social media. And to make an even bigger difference, I finally decided to build my own camera rig before this project. So let's talk about this. So you might have seen this rig already in the behind the scenes video that Gunders did, but he doesn't want to talk about gear and me too, but that's apparently what everybody wants. So here we go. So this is what I brought with me to Africa. So one Sony a7S III, Tamron 28-75, Sigma 14-24 and Sigma 100-400. Then I got a small rig cage for my Sony, small rig top handle, small rig rotating NATO side handle, this thing, this cable and the Atomos Ninja 5. Okay, so why would anybody spend a thousand dollars on a monitor and handles? First, you can shoot ProRes and while it does retain more information and is less compressed, I honestly can't tell the difference between ProRes and the standard XAVCS. It for sure edits a lot faster but the file size is three times bigger, but nevertheless I still recorded most of this race in ProRes. Second thing is handheld shooting. Since you have a lot more weight now with the monitor and the handles, there are much less of those micro jitters and the camera shake just feels more organic. But Rainis, why not just use a gimbal? I don't like shaky handheld footage. Well, this is something that was very hard for me to understand when I just started out filmmaking and honestly I discovered that only quite recently. Because I just got so sick of using the gimbal over and over and over again. It just wasn't fun anymore and I felt like I just cannot use my full cinematography potential while I'm on a gimbal. Because all I worry about is how to get a stable shot. Without the gimbal I just feel more in control with my camera and my framing is overall much better. Plus sometimes I do really like that camera shake in my shots because it kind of gives the sense that you're there experiencing that very moment and the shot just feels a lot more dynamic. And then the final two things are, one, I can upload a custom LUT into the monitor and see the final result. The video still comes out in S-Log, but I just get a better sense of how I need to expose my shot. And it's just nicer to look at, especially on this big screen. And finally, you just look way more professional and serious with this thing. Or at least that's how I feel while using it. I love this thing and honestly, I never want to touch a gimbal again unless I'm doing a follow shot where someone is talking or a real estate type of video. Okay, gear aside now, let's talk more about the Africa Eco Race. So the first days were super uncomfortable because we were the two youngest people in the whole group. Like everybody is mostly in their 40s, 50s and 60s. And honestly, we just felt a bit out of place. Like you just get that sense where everybody is thinking, what the hell are these two young bloods doing here? I would ask someone if I could get a shot of them and I just straight up said, no thanks, even though I was wearing my media t-shirt. So yeah, first three days was just us trying to adapt and get comfortable. Then on that third day, we were supposed to drive to the port to take a ferry to Morocco and that's the day we met our partners in crime, the photographers, the two guys we spent most of our time with, Tim and Alessio. These guys are fucking awesome. They told us everything we needed to know about the rally. We drove 10 hours in the car together every day talking about life. Well, let's just say this whole experience would never be the same without them. So we got on the ferry, two days later arrived in Morocco, did our border checks, showed our passport a million times and finally entered the first stage of the race where we would patiently wait and capture everyone driving by.
Oh yeah, and I also put these IKEA plastic bags all over my lenses, which looks pretty awkward, but surprisingly, even though this limited the range of my zoom, this solution worked like a charm and I have almost no sand in my lenses. So I recommend doing this if you're going to the desert because sand is everywhere. <laughs> And on a project like this, a lot of things can and will go wrong. Like here, I just left my bag next to this bush and a helicopter just suddenly appears out of nowhere and makes a sandstorm. Or you go a bit too close to one of the riders and he splashes that sand in your face. Well, and if it suddenly becomes windy, it gets even worse because wind carries that sand uh, with it, but uh, yeah. The first round was pretty good, got some nice shots. I created a real bond with my Sigma 100 to 400 and really got to know it and appreciate it better. It's such an impressive lens for the price point and I got a ton of use out of it. If I would do this again, however, I would really like to try out the Tamron 35 to 150 because in a project like this, you never know what's coming. Like, hey, you're sitting in your tent drinking beer and you hear a helicopter landing and you absolutely want to get that shot. There is no time to change lenses or to run up very close and make it in time, or even when you're just shooting the riders. Sometimes we arrived at the spot and they appeared like 400 or 500 meters further than we expected because there is no built road for them and they don't navigate those 6,000 kilometers with GPS. They just use a piece of paper with some notes on them. So there's so much unpredictability here that a wide range zoom lens would be the most effective choice. Also, I realized very quickly that it's very hot here and that you need to eat and drink a ton of water all the time because at one point I got so dizzy for two minutes that I thought I would pass out. And usually that also ends up with puking everywhere for the whole day. But uh, luckily I was fine. The highest temperature we experienced was actually 53 degrees Celsius, which let's just say wasn't fun. <laughs> So everyone drove by, we got our footage, and it was time to drive 8 hours to the B-Walk, which is the term for their base, where we would set up our tents, back up our footage, go for dinner and get more shots. And this is pretty much the plan for every day for two weeks straight. So go to sleep at like 11 p.m. or midnight. Next morning, 4 a.m., wake up, grab your daily packet of snacks and water, pack your tent, put everything in the car. If you have spare time, go for breakfast or insect infested showers. If not, get in the car. And we would start driving into the stage before the start, which took anywhere from two to four hours. And of course we were driving off road while barely awake. And to me, this was one of the most challenging things about this whole project, because you are so tired from the heat, from the filming and lack of sleep, that even though this car is shaking you violently going up and down the dunes and rocks, you just can't help but fall asleep and then wake up when we hit a big rock or there's a little bump which sends everyone flying and you hit your head against the ceiling. Yeah, that happened a lot. Plus, we would also get stuck every day somewhere. Tim fell onto a cactus and I had the honor to be his medic, so yeah. But again, huge shout out to Tim and Alessio because they took care of driving us around. This project was also very challenging for us as a couple because I'm very much in my own world when I'm working. We would drive somewhere to get some footage and I would be like, nah, I don't like this spot and then walk two kilometers away from the car and find my own or hike over a mountain to get to the other side, you know, things like that. I'm constantly thinking, how can I make this different? Which lens and angle should I use this time? What can I do in the next spot? And obviously I consider myself quite experienced in these run and gun type of situations, but for Katrina, it's something totally new and I kind of just left her, which was very hard for her, but you know, that's how I am. Work is work, but maybe next time I'll try to balance this a bit more. Even though she absolutely killed it, one evening we were waiting in line for dinner and she was editing some of her content while standing. Damn. And yeah, if you want to check out her work in this project, go to Africa Eco Race Instagram, TikTok or Facebook. And all of the content there starting from October was made by her. So yeah, shout out to my girl. And of course you can also follow her on Instagram. This was also the first time we have ever visited Africa. And although we just saw a small glimpse of this continent, it feels so different from any other place I've ever been to. First of all, the nature is just astonishing. Lots of mountains, beautiful dunes. By the way, this was also the first time in a century, I believe, where Mauritania is green. They had tons of rain the previous month, and I've never seen something like this in my life. Sand dunes with grass around them, like, what is this? It looks so strange seeing these two together, but at the same time, it's simply beautiful. I love it, and the footage came out great. 
But then, aside from the nature, you also have the cities and the people, and that was a real culture shock to me. Seeing the conditions these people live in. You know, Morocco was fine, but when we came to the border to enter Mauritania, there were like 100 people around our cars, trying to sell us SIM cards or cans of coke that they purchased down the street, and they looked so desperate. You could say no thanks a thousand times and they would still try. And when we drove through the capital of Mauritania, it got even worse. Our tent got stolen from the trunk, kids jumping on our car and washing our windows even though we didn't want them to. Sometimes they just came to our windows and stared at us, you know. For me it was fine, but for Katrina it was a lot more difficult. One quite funny and at the same time very disturbing thing, uh, fact actually, is that most of these houses you see are not finished. Like the first floor is fine and the second one just looks like they stopped building it at some point. And the reason for that is that there are no taxes on a house which isn't finished. Yeah. Anyway, when you see things like this, it really makes you appreciate every little thing you have. You know, just the fact that you have a roof over your head and endless water from the tap, which is clean and safe to drink, is a huge luxury. And yet we still feel unhappy because we don't have a nice car or that new iPhone. It just seems so stupid to think like that. Speaking of water, we were also told it's very sketchy to be drinking tap water here or eating anything that's fresh that uh, basically has been washed with that tap water, like vegetables, for example. Otherwise, again, you can end up puking for two days straight. Nice. Then I want to talk about this thing, which is the Autol Evo Nano Plus. It's the first non-DJI drone I've ever tried, and in my opinion, it's a really interesting one. And yes, Autol did send us this drone, but they're not telling us what to say or not say about it. I took it to Africa with me for two weeks and tested it out in different scenarios. And although it struggles a lot currently in the software department, the hardware is really good. It flies fantastic, the connection never breaks, unless you had a DJI Mavic Mini 3 with him and he was constantly losing connection while I had no problems whatsoever. The low light is insane for a drone of this size. This was shot at like 800 ISO, the hyperlapse is quite reliable, the drone flies straight without losing or shifting away from the point of interest. It's really great, but like I said, the software is just not there yet. The app feels a bit wonky, the image processing is quite terrible with insane amounts of sharpening which you cannot control. The log mode only works in auto mode for some reason, but the reason I find this product really interesting is because of that amazing hardware and the fact that all of my problems with this drone are in the software, meaning that they can be fixed by a software update. So while I cannot really recommend this drone at the moment, Autel did tell me that they are working on all of these issues and when they finally do it, I strongly believe that this has the potential to be a DJI killer. But yeah, overall this was a great experience, incredible views, incredible footage. The owner of the Africa Eco Race, uh, Jean-Louis Schlesser, actually took me on a ride in his private airplane, which was quite cool. But overall it was a huge physical and mental challenge, and I'm really just happy that we made it through, and having killer material of course is a huge bonus. And honestly, even though this isn't my dream project or anything, I felt so in my element during this whole two-week period. I was experimenting a lot, with different angles, moving myself around, not just staying in one place and doing the same thing every day. It felt like it ignited a spark in me and yeah, I just feel great. So yeah, now it's just a matter of editing these videos, coming up with new creative ideas and so on. The first two videos for YouTube are already out and you can check them out by going to their channel, which is Africa Eco Race. And uh, yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts about them, your opinions. And by the way, we're still working on our color grading masterclass. And if you're interested and want to receive a discount upon launch, go to dreamtailfilms.com and sign up. Other than that, thank you for tuning in and you know the drill. Peace out. Mm -hmm.